Acts chapter number 4, we'll begin reading verse 5. The Bible says, And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, talking about the disciples, says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. And by the way, whenever you get full of the Holy Ghost, nothing else matters. Uh, they're on trial for healing a man. Hmm? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole? Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We're thankful under that same name we still see folks saved. We still see lives changed. Uh, and we still can come and worship and glorify you because of the great things you have done. Amen. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us. Thank you for the good singing, the good choir singing, the good special singing. Thank you for the good testimony. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for being a good God. Yes. Now, Lord, we could all testify this morning that we have things going on in our lives. Some are facing some dire things. Some are facing some things that just are agitating. Some are facing good things. And some are in valleys. So, Father, as we assemble here this morning, I pray that you'd give us grace enough to put all that out of our minds. And God, help our minds and our hearts to be focused on you. And, Lord, I pray you'd speak. I pray you'd certainly edify your people May they be greatly encouraged. And Lord, thank you again for the good week of revival you gave us. And then, Father, I pray if there be any amongst us today who are saved but not revived, that this morning, like that impotent man was made whole, they'd be made whole. And Father, I pray especially if there's any here this morning that are not saved, may be a good moral person, may be a religious person, but is not saved. I pray today would be the day of their salvation. Use this unworthy vessel. Help us this morning, Lord. Without you, we can do nothing. So help us, and we'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. In this text, we find three simple things. <clears throat> the first thing, you see an assembly. The first two verses, you find an assembly of all the elders which are in connection with the high priest of Israel. All the religious crowd, all the lawyers, all the uh, uh, crowd who have given themselves to studying the law of God, who have assembled, Brother James, to pass judgment on two of Jesus' disciples uh, who are doing what Jesus commissioned them to do. We see an assembly. Notice the anointing. Verse number 8. Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Can I say? The Holy Ghost is the majority. Amen. If you can build yourself up on your most holy faith and be filled with the Holy Ghost, it don't matter who comes against you. Amen. If God be for us, who can be against us? Right. Hmm? And he's full of the Holy Ghost. Can I help you with something? Peter couldn't have preached the day that he preached uh, the message they preached on Pentecost had he not been filled with the Holy Ghost. 
Peter could not have stood before these men uh, and did what he's about to do had he not been filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, Peter was a fisherman. Peter was an unlearned man. Uh, Peter did not command the respect of this crowd, uh, but when he got full of the Holy Ghost, he could not be denied uh, uh, what he had to say, and it really uh, messed up their apple cart. We see the assembly, we see the anointed, and then he gives an announcement. He lets them know that the man was healed under the power of Jesus, whom they crucified, whom God raised from the dead. But look at the announcement he makes in verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given uh, given among men whereby we must be saved. Verse number 12 is a hated verse in the religious world. The Pope don't like verse 12. The Buddha crowd don't like verse 12. No, the Hindus don't like it. Uh, Can I say the Allah crowd and the Muslims do not like verse number 12? Uh, Can I say there's a lot of denominations that do not like verse number 12? Salvation is not in your good works. Salvation is not uh, in your standing in community. Uh, Salvation is not how much money you put in the plate. Uh, Salvation is not in your baptismal certificate. Uh, Salvation comes uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I want to do a little word study out of verse number 12. There's some words here I'm interested in this morning before we get to the thought. The first word that I'm interested in in verse number 12 is neither. It says, neither is there salvation in any other. That word neither means not one. There's not one other man that's ever been born that can bring salvation to you. Not one. Not one. Not one, Brother Donald. Uh, You can pray to Mary all you want to, and you'll die and go to hell. There's none other name. Not one. I'm interested in that word. I'm interested in that word none. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It said, neither, not one, and then none other name. None other means not anyone. Not one man or woman that's ever been born, neither. And then none, not anyone, not any other deity. You can pray to the Ra, the sun god, and you'll die and go to hell. Not anyone, not any other deity, not any other person, not any other perspective, not anyone else can save you. So I'm interested in that word neither. I'm interested in the word none, but I'm interested in a word that means necessity. Look what it says. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must. That word must means it's a necessity. Means if you're going to have salvation, if you're going to go to heaven when you die, if you're going to have eternal life, it is a necessity that you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because there's not any other deity. There's not any other person that can save you. And then there's another word here that I'm very interested in. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other, here it is, name. None other name uh, under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. There's only one name that can save you. There's only one you can call upon, and he'll answer your prayer. There's many gods of stone. There's many statues. Uh, 
There's many gods of wood. There's totem poles. Uh, there's tiki gods. Uh, 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 there's many uh, 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 figurines that people pray to. Little angels. Uh, little gnomes with hairy uh, uh, hair sticking up on them. Uh, all kinds of things you can pray to. Uh, but there's only one name uh, that brings salvation. Uh, there's only one name that brings help in your time of need. Uh, there's only one name that's above every other name. Uh, and the only name that God recognizes uh, and it's the name of Jesus Christ uh, I bless the name uh, of the darling son of God uh, I want to preach with God's help for a minute this morning on no other name no other name there's not one there's not anyone hmm? it's a necessity the name of Jesus there's no other name can I say this uh, his name is a sacrificial name. Right. Hmm? Uh, it's a sacrificial name. You say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about in John chapter number 1, down about verse 29, uh, uh, when John the Baptist is out baptizing in the river Jordan, uh, and Jesus comes walking, uh, and he says, Behold the Lamb of God, uh, which taketh away the sins of the world. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, uh, the Lamb uh, 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 represented a sacrifice. Uh, he didn't say, Behold the King of glory. Uh, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. Uh, his his name is a sacrificial name. Uh, he became our lamb. Uh, he went to the cross of Calvary, uh, shed his blood to be our uh, 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 redemption. Uh, he gave his life. Uh, he sacrificed himself uh, that you and I can have salvation. Uh, his name is a sacrificial name. Uh, hey, praise be to God for the lamb uh, uh, that bore the sins uh, of you and I that we could be saved. Uh, you see, under the law, they put up two lambs. And they'd uh, 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 check out those lambs, and they'd judge those lambs, and those lambs had to be without spot, without blemish. Couldn't have any scars on their bodies. Couldn't have any problems in their coats. Everything about them, their legs couldn't have any deformity. Everything about them, those lambs had to be perfect. They'd bring those uh, two lambs to the high priest at the great uh, Passover feast. Uh, and they bring those lambs. And see, uh, uh, every year, Miss Veronica, God required a lamb. Uh, and that lamb uh, uh, would have to be without spot, without blemish. And that lamb would have to be sacrificed uh, and the blood put on the mercy seat uh, and the body and the carcass burned. Uh, and that lamb uh, would push back uh, the sins of the people for a year uh, and it would stay the wrath of God from Israel. Uh, uh, can I say they bring two lambs and one lamb would become a scapegoat he was turned loose into the wilderness but the other lamb the high priest would pray over and confer all the sins of the people on that lamb uh, and then he'd take a knife and he'd slit its throat uh, and drain it of its blood uh, and take that very blood uh, and take it into the most holy place uh, and put it on the mercy seat on the ark of the covenant uh, and if everything was done properly uh, the Shekinah glory of God would come down uh, and receive the sacrifice uh, my dear friends uh, you and I should have went to the cross uh, we should have died uh, but friend we got to go free uh, and Jesus uh, took our sins uh, became our sacrificial lamb uh, and shed his blood uh, and you and I could have eternal life uh, and the wrath of God is stayed from everybody who has eternal life uh, his name is a sacrificial name can I say this his name is a substitutionary name he became our propitiation. He became our offering. Again, we should have had to die and pay for our own sins in hell. But there came a substitute uh, that took our place. Uh, there came one that stood in our gap uh, and said, No, Father, uh, don't judge them, judge me. 
and it pleased the Lord to bruise him uh, and the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all uh, and he substituted himself uh, and became our offering uh, that you and I wouldn't have to die and go to hell his name's a sacrificial name his name's a substitutionary name can I say his name's a saving name can I say uh, the name Jesus means savior the first time it was ever spoken, an angel spoke it to Mary. Uh, now shalt call his name Jesus. Uh, uh, can I say something? Uh, 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 when the angel showed up at his birth, uh, they said glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to men. Why? Because God had sent a Savior for mankind. Uh, uh, can I say? Uh, uh, the high priest hated him every time they heard his name. Uh, his name was Jesus uh, Christ, the anointed, uh, the Savior, the anointed one. Uh, uh, can I say this? Uh, verse 4 said, uh, There's no other name which my men may, whereby men must be saved. Uh, why? Because his name is a saving name. Uh, hey, uh, every sinner uh, on his way to hell, uh, if he calls on the name of Jesus uh, and asks God to save him, uh, he will. Hallelujah. Because he came seeking to save uh, that which was lost. Uh, there's no other name like his name. It's a sacrificial name. It's a substitutionary name. It's a saving name. Uh, can I say this? It's a soothing name. Uh, you know, <laughs> Jesus is the only person I've ever seen that has about 750 names. Maybe more than that, I don't know. I know when I preach on who is the king of glory and I start naming about half of them, it takes all I got to get that message done in an hour. What can I say? His name's a soothing name. He's called the Prince of Peace. Mm. Uh, Paul wrote in, uh, to, to the church at Ephesus, for he is our peace. Huh? Jesus said that he had to leave, but he was sending the comforter. Uh, and he said, my peace I leave with you. Not peace is the world. No, my peace. Uh, hey, his name's a soothing name. Uh, how can I say there's been times... Uh, when I've been troubled, uh, there's been times when my heart's been broke. Uh, there's been times when I've been troubled over some of you uh, late at night. Uh, there's been times when trouble came to my way uh, and I didn't have the answers. Uh, there's been times uh, when I didn't know which way to look or turn. Uh, but can I say, uh, if I can just get on my knees uh, and start speaking the name of Jesus, uh, there's something that comes from the glory world uh, that takes my troubled soul uh, and it brings comfort uh, it brings help uh, it brings relief uh, hey the name of Jesus uh, is a soothing name sometimes it's good just go around and say Jesus 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 about the third time you, you, business starts picking up in here uh, uh, hey uh, our governments hate that name uh, uh, sinners hate that name uh, the sorry devil hates that name uh, but the glory world stops and pays attention uh, when that name is uttered among men uh, and when you just start saying Jesus uh, Jesus uh, how I love you Jesus uh, he'll show up uh, and bring peace it's a soothing name huh? I just like hearing it can I say it again Jesus 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 uh, all the burdens roll away you start speaking his name you say preacher are you saying your problems are gone no but I got someone that helps me with my problems and can I say when he shows up it really don't matter anymore uh, listen there have been times where I've been granted to be in his presence and I say the last thing on my mind are problems there's just something about him there's something about his name his name's a soothing name can I say this his name's a securing name 
some of y'all would quit worrying so much and get off some of your nerve medicine if you'd realize he is the rock of ages. He's my rock. He's my high tower. He's my fortress. He's my stronghold. Uh, are you listening? Uh, hey, he's my anchor within the veil. Uh, hey, can I say, uh, uh, I'm in him, uh, in his hand, in his hands, in the Father's hand. Uh, and it'll do you some good if you just realize uh, everything's okay in glory. Uh, everything's all right with Jesus. Uh, and if you're in him uh, and he's in you, uh, it'll be all right with you too, friend. I, I, I really feel sorry for that crowd that believes they can lose their salvation. If they'd ever realized security's not in me. I want to tell you something. If the book said that my salvation depended on me, I'd be afraid I'd lose it too because I'd lose it about ten times a day. Are you listening? Uh, but my salvation's not me. My salvation's in that name that none other name can, and neither any other. Are you talking? I, I'm talking about it's in Him. And can I help you something? In the Old Testament economy, they had seven cities of refuge. And if you'd done something that you were guilty of, but it was an accidental thing, Miss Mary, you was out just trying to cut a little wood for the fireplace, and the axe head uh, came off the axe handle, and it hit your darling sister, Cinda, and she died. Well, don't worry about her. She'd be in heaven. She's okay, all right? Uh, but Jack or your brothers under the law an eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth they're coming after you they don't want to hear it was an accident they don't want to hear manslaughter no it's murder so if you can get to a city refuge they can't get you what a blessing but that security is only as good as long as the high priest there is alive. When he dies, they open up the gate and say, All right, any Avengers can come and get them. Well, I got news for you, Brother Charlie. There's been an Avenger on your trail for a long time. But when you got in Christ, uh, 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 you got to the refuge. Uh, but I got good news. Uh, he told John there in Revelation 1, He said, I'm he uh, that is alive. I was dead, uh, and I'm alive forevermore, uh, and I have the keys to death and hell. Uh, our great high priest, Jesus Christ, uh, is never going to die. Uh, hey, uh, and as long as he's alive, I have refuge. Uh, I bless his holy name. Uh, it's a securing name. Uh, I have security in him today. Uh, what a blessing to have that assurance. No wrong, wonder the songwriter, blessed assurance, uh, blessed assurance, uh, Jesus is mine. Mm. Hey, it's a security name. Can I say it's a strengthening name? I don't know about you, there's times I've been weak. I'll tell you a very difficult time to preach is on Sunday morning after revival meeting. I was in church all week. Then you had yesterday, get everything done that you normally get done throughout the week. Uh, you're tired physically. Uh, we just heard two great preachers. Uh, I got to follow that. You all have heard me preach for years, and you're not impressed anymore. And Cody's horn comes in, plays harmonica, preaches, sings. He's a pilot. I mean, everybody, wow, look at that guy. Oh, it's just good old brother Doug. Daniel Waters hits a keyboard and sang. They fits a guitar and play and do all that stuff. Ah! It's just brother Doug. He can't sing, can't play, can't do anything. Uh, everybody's wore out. We get tired. I want to say, in this journey of life, and brother Cody preached a wonderful message about our journey the other night. In this journey of life, you you get weary. Can I help you? Sometimes you just get tired of fighting the devil. Sometimes you just get vexed with the world. I'll tell you what, things going on in this world vex me. I really do. Can't hardly watch TV anymore. The commercials, man, are 
talking about that in my Sunday school class. The programs on TV, every program's got to have a homosexual now. Uh, every one. Uh, it's like they got their, their token gay person. What a blessing. Hmm? I mean, everything around us will vex us. You can't go in a store anymore without saying, you got to wear a mask, got to wear a mask. Uh, I thought after you got the vaccine, you didn't have anything to worry about. And if masks are so great, you're so, you're so comfortable with yours, if yours is so great, why should you worry if I got one or not? Huh. Huh. And now, Brother Doug, you don't care about society. Yeah, I do. That's why I preach the gospel. That's why I tell truth and not the garbage Fauci is promoting. Uh, uh, that can't be truth because it changes every other week. Uh, it wasn't that long ago he said you need two, maybe three masks. I got news for you. <laughs> I got the antibodies. I don't need any of it. And more than that, I got Christ, so I really don't care. So what if you get the disease? What if you get the virus and die? I'm better for it, huh? Won't have to lose weight then. But his name is a strengthening name. He said that he's the lily of the valleys. Now, Brother Bobby didn't say he'd get us out of the valley. He'd just be the lily in our valley. And you get to looking at how he blooms and all that he does. He'll strengthen you for your journey. I'm glad for strength from the glory world. There's a time I'd tell you the best message I ever heard on the juniper tree was Brother Doug's. But Brother Cody's is right up there different angle but I'm glad even when you're under the juniper tree you can get meat from the glory world that will sustain you for 40 days 40 nights he'll strengthen you for your journey his name's a strengthening name I thought about this his name is a supporting name sometimes it's just good to know somebody's with you Sometimes it's good to know you got somebody to stand with you, somebody being a help to you. Somebody, be, I mean, Paul had Barnabas. I mean, it's good sometimes to know you're not in it alone. You know what he said? He said, I'm a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. His name's a supporting name. He'll support you, friend. He's for you, not against you. Even when you fall, even when you fail, even when you falter, even when you make a mess of it, he's still for you. Mm. I like that song, Miss Brittany. I don't know where you dug that up, but I liked it. Mm. He don't care about all that. He cares about you. Mm. Hey, his name is a supporting name. Can I say this? His name's a sovereign name. He's not the man upstairs. He's not the big guy. No. No, his name's sovereign. He's the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. They don't get him bigger than him. He's the highest of the high. Hmm? He's Lord. He's the King of Glory. His name's a sovereign name. Then I thought about this. His name's the superior name. His name is Almighty God. Superior to any other name. Neither is there salvation in any other for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved can I say he's got many other names and all of them simply means this he's exactly what you need when you need it he told Moses from the burning bush I am that I am he's always in the present tense and he's always exactly what you need. Now, I wonder on this Sunday morning, what do you need? So, preacher, I don't need a thing. Liar, liar, pants on fire. If you're breathing, you have needs. 
You may not have financial needs. You may have financial needs. You may not have physical needs. You may have physical needs. You may not have spiritual needs, but I doubt it because there's not a halo in the building. But whatever you need is found in Jesus Christ. I wonder this morning, do you know him as Savior? Because if you don't, nothing else matters. He bled and died, was buried and rose again for one purpose, to save you from your sins. He could have wrote salvation in the sky, but it took a blood sacrifice to pay for your sins. And friend, he died for you. He cares about you. He wants to save you. Are you saved today? If you're not, I dare say most of what I've said it really didn't mean, mean anything to you. You just wait for me to get done so you can go get your cheeseburger. But if you're not saved, friend, you need something more than a cheeseburger. You need salvation. And the only way, place you're going to find it is in Jesus Christ. In a moment, we're going to have an invitation. We're going to invite you to come. If you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible, show you how to be saved. You can be saved today by putting your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you're saved, what needs do you have? Let me ask you this question. Why do you have them? You know why Jesus on the cross said, I thirst? So you and I can never say we'd ever thirst again because he said he, he gave us a fountain of water welling up within us. But some of you came in this morning spiritually thirsty. Some of you came in this morning spiritually hungry. Some of you came in this morning spiritually dirty. Some of you came in this, mor this morning spiritually all confused. Some of you came in spiritually dead. And what you need is Jesus. Say, preach, I was in revival all week long. Well, what did you do with it? Huh? Well, maybe you got another need. Maybe you got a burden for somebody. Maybe you got a concern for somebody. He said, cast all your care on him, for he careth for you. You need Jesus today. We all need him. We need more of Jesus than we've ever had before. I wonder this morning, will you be honest this morning? Will you be transparent this morning? Will you come to the name that's above every name? The God behind the name, his name is Jesus. And he cares for you. Will you come and let him have your burden this morning? Will you come and give it all to him this morning? Folks are coming. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. My mother used to sing a song, I must tell Jesus all of my sorrows. This morning, you might need to come and do that. If you're not right with God, why don't you come get right with God? It'll be in no better day than this Sunday morning, get right with God. Because the danger is you don't know if you'll have another chance to get right with God. You ought to come this morning. Folks are coming. Folks are praying. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name. Lord, you know the need of every person here. Lord, in our finite and best way we could, we tried and we come way short, but we tried to show people the answer for their need is Jesus. So, Father, I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would now speak to hearts. I pray he'd tug at them through cords of love and folks would come and get things made right with Jesus. Sinners would come get saved. Soiled Christians come get made right. Struggling Christians would come and get help. God, I pray you'd do a work in folks' lives. Maybe somebody hears everything's great. They're on fire for God, but they got a burden for somebody. God, help them with their burden. Lord, whatever the need is, God, do a work around here. We'll bless you for it. For it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.